So on defense, the Baltimore Ravens have been doing a lot of experimenting, especially at the safety position, but the changes that they made in yesterday's game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, they worked, and Harbaugh said that that's looking like that's going to be the move going forward. Team Keep It Clean, we're going to talk about that and a lot more coming up. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it makes such a big difference. So, as we know, uh, the Baltimore Ravens secondary has been a mess. Their pass defense has been all sorts of bad. They get creatively bad. They find new ways to be bad this year. So, Ravens tried to tinker with some stuff. A couple of weeks ago, they benched Marcus Williams. Pass defense was still bad. A couple of weeks after that, they benched Eddie Jackson. Pass defense was still bad. So, they're like, man, we benched one safety, then we benched another safety, but it's still the same issue. So, in yesterday's game, they said, you know what? Instead of just benching one, let's bench both of them at the same time. And that's exactly what they did. Because their deep safeties in yesterday's game against the Steelers ended up being Kyle Hamilton and Audarius Washington. And see, the thing about those two that I love, um, they are two of the Baltimore Ravens players that can play in so many different positions on this defense. They, they, and they both do, they, they do an amazing job wherever they are. So shout out to Super Duper Kyle. And shout out to Ardarius Washington because in that Steelers game, they held it down. Is it a coincidence that they ended up starting and the defense didn't give up any passing touchdowns? I, I don't know. I know Steelers offense isn't the best, but at the same time, Ravens defense, their pass defense, they were making all these little quarterbacks look like Patrick Mahomes, like we were going against Patrick Mahomes every week, like we were going against Brady every week or something like that. They were having these quarterbacks going crazy. Running their numbers up against them every single week So I really, really appreciate that the Baltimore Ravens They saw this issue and they addressed this issue Now, something that may also be a coincidence Is that they did this against Russell Wilson This reminded me of how Russell Wilson got his start in the first place Because when he got drafted to the Seattle Seahawks The Seattle Seahawks had signed Matt Flynn in uh, free agency he had played for the Packers the year before and they signed him because he threw five touchdowns in a game uh, toward the end of the season and the Seahawks saw that they said oh yeah 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 give, give me that give me that give me that so they signed him but in practice in training camp and all that Russell Wilson he looked better and he was what I think a third round pick uh, versus the the high paid free agent quarterback that your team just brought in but the, the Seahawks they, they had to make a tough decision and they were willing to make that tough decision despite uh, Matt Flynn making all this money. Despite them giving him this big offseason deal, they still ended up starting Russell Wilson. Why? Because he was the better option and he gave their team the better chance to win. And I always admire, admire that about the Seattle Seahawks. I, I loved it so much because they did not let the money cloud their judgment on how they could become a better football team. And then, boom, look at that. They end up getting a Super Bowl. Making it to two of them, but winning one of them. So with the Baltimore Ravens, I love the fact that they did this. We know Marcus Williams, he makes a lot of money for the Baltimore Ravens. And I do not think that they should or they do regret signing him in free agency a couple of years ago. I thought it was a great signing back then. And he started the season. He was killing it. Marcus Williams was doing his thing, but then he got hurt. Then the following year, he was doing his thing, and then he got hurt again. Uh, but this year, I'm not sure what's been happening. He just has not been himself. He's been struggling. But the Baltimore Ravens are still willing to be like, you know what? Even though we're paying him a lot of money. Uh, he hasn't been playing good for us, so we're going to look in another direction. So I, I love that about them, and I love that they took this step because this can go a long way. Now, we're not expecting the defense to be locked down every single week now. Now, if they want to do the same thing that they did against the Pittsburgh Steelers but not give up any touchdowns, like rushing or passing, hey, be our guest, but that's not a realistic expectation to have for this defense. But if they can keep improving, if they can keep on climbing, we ain't asking you to be top five. You ain't got to be top ten. We're not expecting that. If they achieve that, though, hey, great. Go for it. But as long as they can just be consistent, as long as they're not getting beat down, as, not, as long as they're not giving up all these big passing plays and whatnot, big passing yards, a bunch of touchdowns and whatnot, if they can just be better than what they have been, and I'm, I mean being better than what they have been ain't really hard because I mean, the only way to go is up. But – if they can just continue to improve, then they can be in good shape. Because we know the offense is going to bounce back. We know that. We know that. Especially you got Monday Night Football coming up. You know how Lamar is on Monday Night Football. So we ain't really worried about uh, the offense. But let's hear what John Harbaugh said about uh, his new 
starting safeties. Uh, he said that, uh, yeah, that was the plan going in with those two guys. Uh, we were trying to attack some issues we had in the back end. Uh, I thought they played well back there. Ardarius had earned that opportunity. He certainly had. He also said, we put Kyle Hamilton back there as well. I thought he played very well back there. He did a great job communicating. They both did. They certainly did. They did a phenomenal job. And with Kyle Hamilton, I know a big fear going into the season with Zach Orr was, all right, how is he going to use Kyle Hamilton? Because we don't want him to try to fix something that's not broken. Uh, early this season, it seemed like it was broken, but then they fixed it, and we saw Kyle Hamilton looking like the old Kyle Hamilton. But it just they, they still had their struggles, like Harbaugh said, on the back end of the defense. So they say, you know what? Let's take our best defensive player, and we're going to put him back there, and that being Kyle Hamilton. And it worked. It worked. It, it worked like a charm. But at the same time, Kyle Hamilton, he still did have some plays where he was around the line of scrimmage. So it wasn't like he was just at deep safety the whole game. He, he was still moving around a bit, but he was primarily a deep safety. So that seems like that's going to be the move moving forward, and I, I hope that it works out well. Because John Harbaugh said uh, that will definitely be the formula going forward. So he confirmed it himself. He said, hey, look, that, that's what it is. That's what it is. So shout out to John Harbaugh for making this happen. Um, now, uh, for somebody who a lot of Ravens fans could look at and say, hey, why don't you do the same thing? Because he's been struggling all year. Why don't you put somebody in his position uh, so the Ravens defense could potentially get even better? And that would be with Brandon Stevens. We know Brandon Stevens. Um, he did make uh, a nice little uh, pass deflection yesterday against Calvin Austin on a deep ball uh, that Russell Wilson threw to him on third and one early in the game. Uh, but then we saw uh, a lot of his same tendencies show up uh, on a big play down the field to George Pickens later on. And we get it. At, at the cornerback position, it's such a tough position to play. It's such a hard position to play. And you can do everything right for so long, and then you give up that one play, and it's like, oh, man, look at you. But with Brandon Stevens, we know this year he's been struggling a lot. And it's been the same issues. It's been the same tendencies, not getting his head turned around, not being able to make a play on the ball. What did the Baltimore Ravens do yesterday? In some nickel packages and some dime packages, they brought out Tredavious White, uh, who they traded for from the L.A. Rams uh, about, what, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Uh, and they gave him some opportunities, and he did good. Russell Wilson even tried him twice on two deep balls to George Pickens, and he broke them up. I said, okay, let, let, let's go, man. There we go, Tredavious. I said, do we got that Buffalo Tredavious? Well, hey, I don't know, man. But I wonder if John Harbaugh would consider making that move at the cornerback position and putting Brandon Stevens uh, on the bench or maybe reconsidering what he said he wasn't going to do last week, uh, giving Brandon Stevens a little shot at safety. And Brandon Stevens, he's also somebody that can move around. He's somebody that can move around. He's somebody that you know the Ravens want to have him on the field. We saw this from his rookie year that they wanted to have him on the field. Um, so there's somebody that he's somebody that they really love. They, they, they really love his game. They really love his ethic. Uh, they love his physicality. Um, so I could see them still wanting him to be on the field. But would they give Tredavious White some more bump? I don't know. They possibly could. Um, now, somebody who got bumped the wrong way and then it led to a little hamstring injury in yesterday's game was Roquan Smith. Uh, Harbaugh said that they don't have any updates on Roquan Smith at the moment, but he's supposed to be getting an MRI today. So we should know his status between today or tomorrow. So we'll see about that when that comes out. Now, um, somebody who was out of this game because they were in a walking boot during practice this week was Arthur Millett. Uh, Harbaugh said with Arthur Millett doesn't anticipate him having to go to injury reserve. So that's a good thing. That would mean that the injury is not as serious as it seemed it was, even though they did bring in some corners and some receivers to try out and whatnot. But Harbaugh said he doesn't anticipate having to lose Arthur Millett to injury reserve. So that's a good thing because you want as much depth as you possibly can, especially in the secondary, especially for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, um, somewhere else where we could use a lot more depth is at defensive line. We got uh, Matt Abike. Uh, we got Broderick Washington. We got Brent Urban. We got Travis Jones. But we're missing somebody. That's somebody being Michael Pierce. Uh, he got put on injury reserve a couple of weeks ago. So he has, I believe, two more games uh, to be on injury reserve before he's eligible to return. Harbaugh said he doesn't have an exact status, an exact time frame of when Michael Pierce will be back. But he did say he will be back this year he said it's not a season ending injury reserve uh so he will be back to help the baltimore ravens out on that defensive line uh soon how soon we have no clue so now we reach my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions if you would like to take part in it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the team keep it clean patrons you can send a dm directly on 
Patreon. If you'd like to join the Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Now, uh, let's give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, uh, Hoodie Megatron and Montana. So I appreciate the both of y'all uh, becoming Team Keep It Clean patrons. And to get us started off, let's go with Montana's question. Said, hey, Engraven, hey, Montana. He said, first off, I've been watching you since 2020 and just want to say how much I appreciate the work you do. Uh, your videos are insightful, honest, and entertaining, and they've helped me understand the Ravens, the game of football, and even the business side of the NFL so much better. I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Montana. Uh, he said, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, but became a Ravens fan in 2019 toward the end of the season. Since then, my love for Baltimore, the team, and especially Lamar Jackson has grown tremendously. Hey, we happy to have you on board. Uh, he said, this year's loss to the Steelers was tough. It really was. It was, especially with the drop passes in the red zone and the missed opportunity to close out the game when the defense gave us the ball late. It feels like the same issues come up every time we face them, no matter who's on the field or on the sideline. Why do you think the Ravens consistently struggle to finish games against the Steelers? Is it a problem with play calling, execution, or something deeper like how the rivalry impacts our mentality? Well, that's a, such a great question. So why do the Ravens just keep losing to the Steelers? Um, I think it's really all the above because it seems like with a lot of the Baltimore Ravens, a lot of them picked their they, they they picked the Steelers game to have their worst games of the season or just really really bad games uh, in the season. That's when they decide they you know what we want to drop Isaiah Likely. This dude don't never fumble the ball. He don't never drop the ball. Even when he getting jumped out there on the field after he making a catch with three four guys on him, he don't never drop the ball. He fumbled. Derrick Henry. They said what this was his first fumble in like five hundred something carries. And let's, what? Really, Derrick Henry? At all? No, not Derrick Henry. That's why when that fumble first showed, I was thinking, no, nah, he was down. He was down. Nope, he wasn't down. I'm like, really? What? Now, Justin Tucker, <laughs> he been <laughs> he, he been doing this all year. So with Justin Tucker, it wasn't really no surprise. Um, with Justice Hill, with the 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 drop or the, the he let the defender take the ball from him and turn into an interception. Like, no, Justice, you be catching those and you be coming down with no man. Then Lamar, like, he had some throws that he missed. Like, hold on, Lamar, why, why now? What's going on? And then with John Harbaugh, um, there, there was some stuff here and there. But the biggest thing, the biggest issue with him, it, it was just the predictability. And when the Steelers gave you a chance, uh, you didn't take it. You played it right into their hands. Uh, and that was the two-point conversion uh, where the Ravens, like, it was just so much sloppiness with that, all the two-point conversion stuff. Because they came out. They showed their two-point conversion. Mike Tomlin called a timeout right before they snapped it, and they showed, okay, Lamar's going to run. What did the Ravens do? They, ran, they came right back out. They just went to the other side, and the whole exchange with Isaiah Likely and Nelson Aguilar, that was sloppy. The way that the offensive line was blocking or really not blocking, that was sloppy. Uh, Steelers were all over it, but Ravens made it easy because they didn't change anything up. They just flipped the side that they were going to uh, run to. And Mike Tomlin even called it out. He said with the, the, the Ravens, he said Lamar Jackson – he runs better to his left uh, than he does his right. He said, so we had to be all prepared for that and whatnot. I'm like, man, Mike Tomlin always calling out the Baltimore Ravens. He always does it. Um, he, it's like it's a game within the game because, and a couple people mentioned this. I know, I know one of my guys, uh, JT, he mentioned this years ago, uh, that what Mike Tomlin will do, and there'll be some other people that do it too, but with Mike Tomlin specifically, when they getting ready to play the Ravens, oh my goodness, he will give the best compliments in the world about Lamar, about Harbaugh, about the Baltimore Ravens. He will talk them up like crazy. And I don't know, maybe it gets into their head. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe it gets into their head and they like, oh, Mike Tomlin, oh, he really like us, huh? He's a nice guy, ain't he? And then he catch him slipping every time. And he's talked about over the years how Harbaugh and the Ravens are predictable, how they'll bring the house, they'll burn the house down uh, when everything's on the line with the game on the line. And it just, the same stuff just keeps happening. So it's crazy because, and, and I've said it before recently, like people talk about, oh, the Ravens always struggle with the Chiefs and the Steelers. And, and I say, well, that's because the Chiefs and the Steelers, they know John Harbaugh like crazy. He coached with Andy Reid. And then, of course, he's been going against Mike Tomlin since 2008. But then I thought, hold up. But at the same time, that will give John Harbaugh reason to know them as well. So he should be able to get some wins against them too. But he just been struggling big time. So to answer your question, I just really think it's, it's a lot of everything. It's on players. It's on coaches. It's just on mentality. It's on so much with the Baltimore Ravens as to why they've been struggling with the Steelers so much. Next question came from another team. People clean patient. My guy William he said, "Angry, hope you're doing better after the ugly loss in Pittsburgh." I just wanted to say that despite the loss, I feel good about the team. The defense showed up with Kyle and Ardarius at safety, especially considering Rowe got knocked out for several drives in the second half. That's true. That's true. And they they still came through. The defense still came through. Uh, he said, "Tre'Davious White played well, and hopefully we'll move into the starting lineup over Brandon Stevens." I would like to see that, 
but we'll, we'll see. Um, he said the offense was rolling, but a few penalties, a couple of missed kicks, and poorly timed fumbles killed us. After all of that, we only lost by two points to a team that came into the game seven and two. You know, I don't think about that. I know we hate moral victories. Hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them, hate them because they're not victories. We still lost. Um, but that is something to uh, consider. Um, but at the same time, you said uh, after all of that, so after the offense was rolling, but the, they had the penalties, missed kicks, poorly timed fumbles. You said after all that, we only lost by two points to a team that came in the game seven and two. But at the same time, let's flip it around. After no rushing touchdowns, after no passing touchdowns, Russell Wilson even threw an interception. After all of that, we lost, we lost to the team that did all of that. They didn't score a single touchdown. They kicked only field goals the entire game. We lost to that team. That's pretty bad, man. Now, anyway, he said, I still believe the offense will get it together, and I have hope that the defense will continue to show out, at least not be the worst in the league. <laughs> No, I agree, though. I, I, I agree. Um, he said, no question here. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. Anyway, just like Marcus Williams from the starting lineup, I'm out. Ooh, that's, hey, that's the business, though. That's the business. But, yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the offense, they're not going to be killing it every single game. It, that's the NFL. That's for any offense. Even the, the, the best offense, the strongest offenses in the world, they have their off days. And against the Steelers, the Ravens certainly, certainly have their off days. You know, I, I was really hoping that I was going to get to use this Yesterday, I was really hoping I was going to get to show it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a real terrible towel right here. But Pittsburgh said, nope, you ain't going to get to show that towel off at all. Did not think that that was going to get stuck on the camera. But, hey, that it is what it is. We ain't taking it out either. But, anyway, um, yeah, man, the Ravens just, they, they, they can get better. They will get better. They can do better. They will do better. Um, but now I think the Baltimore Ravens' biggest challenge, the biggest thing that fans are going to be thinking about, because this was a lot of fans' mentality going into the season anyway. It was like, all right. Regular season is cool. We know the Ravens are going to do their thing in the regular season, but what are you going to do in the playoffs? But now, adding on to that, that's still an issue. That's still stuff that's in our minds. But also, too, what are you going to do against a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have been your biggest hurdle, like a team like the Kansas City Chiefs? If you, get, you end up getting to see them in the playoffs, what are you going to do against them? How are you going to act? Are, are you going to stick with your bread and butter? Because, again, that's another thing, too, with the Baltimore Ravens. All their losses have been close. They've been close, but on all their losses, they start to – Sort of forget about Derrick Henry a bit. Now, in yesterday's game, I think in the fourth quarter, they only had like two drives or something like that. They ain't had that many drives, and then situationally, things were different. There were penalties and whatnot, too. But Derrick Henry, uh, even through the first three quarters, he could have been involved a bit more. Like, you got this guy for a reason. For a reason. He's a bell cow running back. He's a true number one running back. Use him like it. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, what's good? Engraving Hope all is well. This game was like Freaky Friday. The defense played well. Shout out to White looking like the lockdown corner he was a couple years ago. But I hope everyone paid attention to the missed field goal. They played in slow-mo. I think the kicker coach that made the video is right. Stout is placing the ball, leaning it to the right. And Tucker's kicking motion. He hooks the ball. I don't know, but in Tuck, I trust, change the holder. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't even know what to tell you on that. I have no clue. Uh, Harbaugh did say, he said, well, Justin Tucker, he said, they ain't bringing in no competition. So Justin Tucker is the kicker. That's who it's going to be, and that's what it is, and that's that. Um, and it, I don't think we no, no, I don't think it would be realistic to expect the Ravens to bring in competition for Justin Tucker. I just don't. Y'all you, you know how they operate. They, they would not do that. Justin Tucker, no, they, they wouldn't do that. Not any realistic competition. They might bring in a guy to work him out real, but they, realistic competition, no, they, they wouldn't do that. Um, Harbaugh said he, he just got to kick it straight He just got to kick it straight So I don't know who it's on I don't know what it is But with the Ravens it, It's something that it needs to be addressed And I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes I have heard that they've been putting extra work in When it comes to the kicking game They've really been trying to find a fix for it But so I, I don't know if, if they haven't replaced the holder If it was something as I can't say as simple as the holder But if, it was, if that was the issue Have they tried that in practice? I don't know I have no clue But it's something that if the Ravens can get that figured out, oh my goodness, it could take it could take take them such a long way because it will make such a big difference. Because in the games that they lost, they've all the games been one score games that they lost, and I'm pretty sure in every yeah in every one of their losses, uh, Justin Tucker has missed field goals, and those missed field goals that's points being taken off the board for the Ravens, um, and that changes the way that the game goes. It changes the script of the game because. If it's the, the, the end of the game and you're down by six, obviously you need a touchdown. You need a touchdown to go ahead and whatnot. But if a field goal is made and you're down by three, 
you could use a touchdown to go ahead, but a field goal could tie it. So that puts less pressure on your offense, and that changes the way that you manage the clock and whatnot. So, so much has changed with these missed field goals. So that's the Ravens got to get it fixed. Next question came from another team. He was being patient, my guy Devin. He said, defense finally plays a good game in the secondary, and now offense just collapse. Ball security, 12 penalties, and missed field goals lost us the game. The Steelers really do have our number one, eight out of the nine last matchups. They do. They do. Us as Ravens, we can't talk no trash to the Steelers. They got us. They really do. They got us. And now, especially with this game, like, we could have easily said before, oh, no, well, Lamar ain't really played against the Steelers too much. But he, I think before this game, he was either 1-3 in three or 1-4 in four against the Steelers. So, still got that same one win. But now, added another loss. So, um, yeah, we, we can't say nothing. He said, what do we have to sacrifice for defense and offense to have a complete game? Um, You just got to hope. <laughs> I mean, you got to hope. They had it against the Bills. They had it against the Broncos. Well, that's really Bo Nix. Bo Nix missed two. To, no, he missed three touchdowns, I think. Three touchdown passes. Um, but, yeah, man, you just got to hope that they can all get it together. And it's tough. It's tough. But hopefully these changes that they made on defense. And, you know, the offense, like we said earlier, the offense is going to have an off game here and there. It, it is what it is. That's the NFL. Not the, the best offense, they ain't going to be rolling every single game. But with Ravens off, and they scored two touchdowns. They scored two touchdowns. Steelers scored no touchdowns, and Ravens still lost. Ooh, that is tough business right there. Um, but yeah, they, the offense gonna get it going. So I, I guess um, just hope that the defense continues to do what they think because we know the offense they're gonna get back to their normal selves real soon. Uh, he said, also that might be the worst two point conversion play we ever ran. Next question came from my guy Brian, who's also team keeper, team patron. He said, "Hey yo, Ang, remember last month when I said we should start our Darius as safety? Should have just brought me in to advise O instead of Dean Fees." Hey. You called it. You was right. And it, it worked. It worked big time. So I'm glad that the Ravens, they saw your vision. And John Harbaugh, he continues to see your vision moving forward. Next question came from another team. People being patient. My guy, Derek, he said, Engraving us Ravens fans are always saying the Chiefs are the Achilles tendon, especially in the playoffs. But I beg to differ. Yes, it is the Chiefs in January. But I think there's another team that could present challenges to us in January, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Think about it. We ain't even got to think about it. We saw it. We know it already. So you ain't even got to explain yourself. Cause we, we, we see that the way that the Ravens have been playing against the Steelers. And yes, they are a problem. He said, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, he said, we can never beat them in the regular season uh, in January. I'm not so sure, my brother. From the looks of it, they're either coming to Baltimore or we have to go there, and I don't think we can do it. They can. They can. Right? Like, Ravens, they can match up with anybody. But you can't do the foolish stuff. The foolish mistakes. And, again, shout out to Pittsburgh because they, they made those plays. But the, the fumbles, the, 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 the drops, the offensive line being ooh, really shaky. Uh, Lamar missing, missing some throws. Um, you, you can't do that, man. You really can't. Ravens with the self-inflicted wounds. Really, them self-inflicted wounds, those are the worst, man. Because you look at it and it's like, oh, we did that. Again, still, still did that thing, but it's like, we did that. Why? Next question came from another team. Keep a clean patient, my guy, Martin. He said, I know you're about to get a lot of questions and comments, so whenever you can get to this comment, it's no problem. Oh, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. Because yesterday, we had 45 questions. 45. And now... And get it, because, uh, you know, like, some of y'all will send one question in the email, but some of y'all will send multiple questions in the email, some of y'all send these long paragraphs, and it's okay, it's okay, don't feel bad, don't feel bad, but, um, yeah, it's it's a lot, because, like I say, when Ravens win, oh, yeah, we get questions still, but when Ravens lose, ooh, ooh, that's what y'all, for y'all don't be playing, man, so, please, everybody, please be patient with us this week. If you send a question, you don't have to send it again. Uh, if you send a question, just know I'm going to try to take care of it as soon as I can. Stuff is very busy. But anyway, he said, um, Tredavis White and Ardarius Washington really made a difference on defense. Steelers couldn't just pick on Marcus Williams and Brandon Stevens all game. And the one big passing play they had was over Brandon Stevens' head. It sure was. Uh, he said, when Tredavis White made that note play on George Pickens early in the game uh, in the end zone, I was like, who is that number 25? They need to be playing more. And eventually figured out who it was, LOL. It was so refreshing that every third down wasn't a completion. And I feel like the coverage really helped our pass rush since they had more time. Yes. That's a good point. Because there's been so many games where, oh, Ravens get a stop on first down. Oh, Ravens get a stop on second down. Third down. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, first down. Whoever the Ravens going up against. But not in yesterday's game. And something else that I appreciated in yesterday's game was it wasn't guys just running free and running wide open. Ravens defense was doing their thing. They really were. Uh, he said, funny enough, 
Um, I feel better after this game about the team overall than I did before, only because the defense looked really good in pass coverage-wise. Still would have liked to win, but just happy to see the defense improve because we know Lamar will not play like that every game. That's a very, very good point. That's a very, very good outlook as well. Uh, if defense keeps playing like that, and then with Lamar, we get that old thing back, the one we used to this season, not that off Lamar on yesterday, not the off offense that was off yesterday, but if we get that the regular Ravens offense from this year, sky's the limit, baby.